Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about April, no, not April, <laughs> I was writing my April horoscope for magazines. It is March of 2023. Okay, so lots to talk about, and as always, thank you to the guys at Know Thyself Podcast. Moi, thank you, thank you for everything you do for me, um, and you all should check them out. <laughs> okay, so, all right, where do we start with this month? Let's talk about Mars. Um, now we have this Mars retrograde cycle that started in, you know, let's say late, it actually went into Gemini in late August and it's still in Gemini. Mars usually takes six to eight weeks to get into, um, a new sign, you know, but it's been in Gemini this whole time because it almost went into cancer and then went back, you know, because it retrograded, um, at the end of October, it went forward in January, but we're still, um, in that retrograde phase and on March um, 15th it's gonna basically the 15th it passes that point at which it turned direction and then it even goes into cancer on um, the 25th of March so fresh energy first of all Mars is about freshness it is the Aries and of course the Sun will go into Aries soon um, the 20 was it 21st or whatever, um, spring equinox. So Mars itself represents Aries finally going out of its weird phase it's been in for so long that's been so stressful to a lot of people because retrograding in Gemini has to do with the mind and your thinking and decisions and your nervous system. And it, some people are still a little bit raw from that. So I think going past the 15th, it's a little better. And then just changing signs and going into Cancer, it's like, like a little more like grounded and balanced because it's like Mars and Gemini is like a lot of electrical energy anyway. So to have it been in there for so long is like, oh my gosh, like stop. <laughs> you know. So off it goes into a new sign. Um, now, you probably read a lot if you're interested in astrology at all about, um, let's talk about Saturn first. Saturn is changing signs. Saturn changes signs every two and a half years. And so we're going from Aquarius to Pisces. And that's going to happen on the 7th um, of March. And so that's a wonderful shift. I mean, it's always good when planets change signs to give a fresh take on things. Um, but Saturn is about structure and is about, you know, being able to be kind to yourself when it's in Pisces. If you're on a spiritual path or doing meditation, you can feel that you're really reaping results and rewards from your actions you're taking because Saturn is very gradual, but then Saturn also can represent like a milestone of like, whoa, look how far I've come. Like you're going up the mountain and you're like, wow, I really have a, um, some sort of incident that helps me see how far I've come. You know, and so you can really start to work with practices around gratitude is a great thing for Pisces, um, self-compassion, compassion for others. And again, that can always be a little iffy when you're talking about having healthy boundaries, Saturn, but still having that compassion, Pisces, you know, and making sure that you're not just excusing poor behavior, but that you're knowing that your own traumatic history of whatever sort you feel um, like you, you're, you have it in sort of the right place, that it's not impacting you so much on a day-to-day -day basis, and you're feeling like you are have a sense of integrity in your world, and you hold yourself together, so it's integrity, like you're knitted together, even though these things have happened to you. So Saturn and Pisces can be really good for that, you know? Um, but, you know, with people that have offended you or been terrible to you or whatnot or circumstances or social situations or whatever's going on, it's like being able to work within a framework of, um, of, of kind of like a gentleness that still makes stuff happen, you know? So it's, it's a tricky balance that, of course, you get more um, in sync with as Saturn stays in Pisces, the longer it stays in Pisces, you know? So a lot can really happen. Um, you know, if you think about even 60 years ago with Saturn and Pisces was going into the hippie movement, you know, and um, how, of course, it was violent stuff about protests and things like that, too. But it was like, you know, brotherly love and things like this and getting more um, aware of that. And I think even in the 90s, I was thinking I used to love the band Delight. 
you know, and they were into that whole thing about, you know, good vibes and this and that, I guess they're in Pisces again. So it's not like overlooking these things, but seeing that love can be more powerful than you think. Let's say that and create solid structures and keep the healthy boundaries and all of that. So we'll see how that pans out over the next two and a half years. Then another big story is, of course, Pluto changing signs. Now, Pluto is, um, you know, I would say a 300 year orbit because it's easy for them to say, but it's 200 and something, 87. It's a lot. It's a lot of years. And it stays in a sign, meh, like sometimes 15 years, sometimes 30 years. Let's say we're up at like 25 years at this point, 25 years. So Saturn, excuse me, Pluto going into Aquarius on my little notes here, uh, March 23rd, roughly. It will retrograde back into Capricorn in June, and then we'll go into Aquarius permanently um, till the next time it goes into Capricorn in 200 something years. Um, it will go into Aquarius in January of 2024. But we get this, you know, more than a sneak preview of Pluto going into Aquarius. And um, now Pluto itself um, is so much about transformation and intensity. It always is, no matter how you slice it, wherever it's going in your chart, wherever it is in the sky. It's that capacity to have renewal when you feel all hope is lost. But it can also drag you through the renewal. They're like, wait, I don't want to be renewed, you know. And then it's hard, you know, with Pluto. But when it's changing signs, it's an intense experience, regardless of what sign it's going to or from. Um, it's just a challenging point there. That cusp is strong for any sign, but we don't notice it as much if it's the sun or whatever. You know, the, something that happens all the time. But with a planet like Pluto, it's like, whoa, that's whoa, that's a hot point going from 29 degrees to zero degrees of the next sign. So there's a lot of intensity. Um, people can feel kind of anxious or unsettled. Now this also with Saturn ingressing, we call it going into the new sign, and also even Mars kind of having more kick than it normally does because of this retrograde. So there's a lot of stuff happening. It can feel really exciting to have all this fresh energy. And even with the spring equinox, right, right at that time, that's always that same kind of idea. So it can be nerve wracking or it can be thrilling, it can be exciting, it can be a mix of both. People can have sleep issues or just feel kind of stuff from the past coming up to deal with and trying not to feel like, I can't believe I didn't take care of this yet or it's another deeper level available to you. Um, and it doesn't have to be icky stuff coming up. It could be good things. People coming back from the past you want to reconnect with. You could, um, one of the things I've done, I really love Qigong, um, which is like a Chinese energy, internal energy work. And I recently found a wonderful Qigong uh, teacher in like a program and really like, yeah, like I've wanted to get back in this for a number of years and I'm doing it. Like, so it can be a reconnection with something you like. It doesn't have to be junk from the past you don't want to see again. It can be re-embracing people and things, you know. And um, so enjoying what also comes up, you know. And so this whole month is a little like that. Now, when we have the new moon, what was really cool is that when the sun and moon are conjunct, right? It's at zero degrees Aries, that first sign of the zodiac, you know? And, and new moons are refreshing in general. Aries is, of course, the first sign, so it's refreshing. But zero degrees of Aries is as refreshing as it gets. And to have a new moon and all these planets changing signs. And so it's almost like a real New Year's kind of thing, but to think about what's the most important to you because Saturn and Pluto also about your values and what's really, really important to you and how can you take, even if it's small, gradual steps to get more of what you want in your life and how can you do that on your own? Like what, because there's something um, of a self-sufficiency with especially Saturn, but like, what can you do within your own power to make things happen? You don't have to rely on others. And it could even be kind of being in a, a state of flow, moving into meditation and being in a state of flow that others do kind of work in your favor or circumstances work in your favor. But you kind of was, you're the um, locus of that beginning, you know, and you're the, um, the one that motivated that to happen. And so thinking about what even small things you can do to move your life ahead incrementally to then kind of um, get a running start and then sort of take off or 
you know, like those guys on the bobsled, you run, 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 and you get in it, and you go, zoom, you know? So you're, you're moving forward step by step, and then you, you move your life, and then it starts to go on its own once it's on that track, you know? So what kind of things can you do, even if it feels like it's slow going at first, that are creating a momentum? And through the consistency and through the idea that these desires have been in my heart, they don't go away, you know, these things that I want to achieve or whatever. So, and, and feeling like not all is lost. That's a great thing about Saturn and Pluto changing signs is it's um, that things, uh, efforts you've made are reaping rewards now that it, it, things weren't in vain. You know, you can re, re, like kind of refurbish things and bring them into the present or um, things just needed to be in the right time and they just start to happen because now the time's right for it. You don't have to adapt them in any way. They just happen. So there's a lot of positive things coming out of this time. So yeah, and just be gentle with yourself through all this and, and really um, if you get that self-criticism away, you can really see what your heart's really saying and then what the steps are to move in that direction that, again, gets those uh, actions happening that, that fulfill your heart's desires, you know, whatever that may be. So, okay, so thanks for listening. Um, check out my website, alunamichaels.com, or you can call me if you want a reading, 248-583-1663, or text to it. Uh, probably already text, right? Um, and send me an email, aluna at alunamichaels.com. Um, but hang in there and enjoy this empowering month that we've all been kind of waiting for. Um, it's a wonderfully fulfilling month. So, um, well, bye-bye for now, and see you soon.